Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast. We are your host, Nathan Bryan. I'm JC Groves. Fellas, it's good to see you again. It's good to be back. It's good to be seen. You know, when people say that to my dad, he always says at my age, it's good to be seen. I think <laughs> I'm going to start claiming that. <laughs> That's it. Well, it's been a while since we've given you a hard time about your age, Brian. So that kind of opened well, a big door for us. <laughs> JC, you got anything good right there? <laughs> no, th there's two reasons. There's two reasons. Number one, people finally realize, Nathan, that we're not that far apart in our ages. And then JC's beard has grown too white for him to pick at anybody about their age. So it's all kind of worked out over the last four years. <laughs> It's only just begun. <laughs> Some of my greatest moments, greatest memories of this podcast was us giving uh, you a hard time about your age, especially when, yeah. when uh, I think it was Matt Dudley that coined the term oh, Pappy. Man. That Pappy. was that was just and I a got moment. Yeah. for it. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, like the well, time I, mean, I took a spanking a from my cousin. I was like, hey, Uncle Brad, that ain't me. <laughs> Hey, here's what made me mad. We had a couple of the meetups and things like that. I had people older than me walking up. Hey, Pappy. I'm like, Pappy yourself. Listen, hey, by the after, way. <laughs> Pappy yourself. Listen, after seeing you and your dad walking in Israel, the, the title fits really well, though. Y'all just move at Edward speed, man. Yeah, we just ease along. But listen, I do have a dad joke for you. Can't wait. Oh, it's this is a legit dad joke. Do you know why the bumblebee wet in its pants? No. I don't know. It didn't make it to the BP station. No. <laughs> See, listen, this oh. week on the Man Up Monday challenge. Nathan's Randall, laughing. He can't help it. <laughs> Randall said, JC doesn't like your dad jokes, and I think they're hilarious. He's just sucking up. I mean, I, that was pretty funny, but not <laughs> a knee slap. It's a dad joke. It's not supposed to be a knee slap. I know. I love it. We well, need to bring back some of that, some of the dad jokes. And uh, Brian, you used to sing on every episode. Yeah, I don't know. Forever. I don't know what ever happened to that. JC just sang a second ago. So I think JC picking about my age has sucked the joy of the Lord out of me. So I don't <laughs> sing anymore. You know, I actually <laughs> listened to two of our old episodes. Nathan, you've been uploading all of the episodes to our YouTube channel. Yes. Go check out our YouTube channel, Recovering Fundamentalist Podcast on YouTube. And uh, I actually listened back to episode, I think it was like two or two in episode five the other day or something like that. I, I'll, admittedly, I don't listen back to our podcast. I, I think the only episode I've listened back to multiple times was the Jim Cimbala interview, um, which I absolutely love. But mm -hmm. back, and we, we even sounded different back then. Like, oh, yeah how it feels like yesterday but it's been a while since we started 149 episodes ago that's crazy that is hard to believe been a lot of life lived in that 149 episodes fellas yes sir well wow. it took us 149 episodes to get to craig edwards preaching in a white robe in the jordan river yeah wow. dude. what a day that was it was incredible you know what I loved about the, the the most about him standing in the Jordan River preaching a phenomenal message that you're getting ready to hear was looking up and on the walkway was the brothers from Nigeria that we got to baptize, uh, Solomon and Samson. And there was one other one. I can't remember his name. Um, what other Bible would, name? Let's just but, Jeremiah. Yeah. Let's just throw Jeremiah, one out there. We'll throw that out there. <laughs> uh, but they were up there listening. There's a group of uh, folks from somewhere in Asia that were standing to our left. They were listening. And uh, what a word that was given standing yeah. in the water. And I know, listen, that water was freezing cold, guys. Like it was, mm -hmm. it was ice cold. And Papa Edwards was in that for a good 15 minutes, I think. Yeah. And I think if, if the chosen or anybody ever needs a John the Baptist extra, <laughs> I cannot imagine a more John the Baptist voice than the voice yeah. you're about to hear when he kicks it up. He starts off in slow gear like he always does. And, buddy, he gets going. I think they say he shucks some corn. It yeah. was awesome. His voice sounds like he's been eating 
locust and wild honey. <laughs> it really and does. Wearing camel's hair. <laughs> in the Jordan River. You know, he's got that. I can't even. <laughs> oh, it was good. Well, we're here. Yeah, really good. I don't know what I just said, but we're continuing on with our episodes from Israel on location. You've already heard from Nathan on uh, the Sea of Galilee. Last week was the Mount of Precept, and my message, and here is today, we have Craig Edwards preaching while standing in the Jordan River. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for y'all to hear this incredible message, short, shortest message Craig Edwards has ever preached, but man, it is full of power, and uh, I'm excited for you to hear this. Y'all ready to jump into the Word? Yes, sir. I am, but real quick, Uh when when I grew up, you know how most pastors take off their watch and lay it down on the pulpit? Yeah. My dad would just take out his calendar. <laughs> so the fact that he, the fact that he preached this short blows my mind. And yes, oh, I'm ready. Man. It's a good one. Let's jump into it. Thanks for listening to the Recovering Fundamentalist Podcast. Let's go. <laughs> Covering Fundamentalist Podcast begins in three. These podcasts, <laughs> podcasts, that sounds like a conviction of beans or peas to me. I, podcast. Listen, in these recovering fundamentalists, they don't know the Bible either. What are the fundamentals? Inerrancy, virgin birth of Jesus Christ, Amen. substitutionary atonement, Amen. bodily resurrection Amen. of Christ, and the authenticity of miracles. Hi, man. Two. I am not a recovering fundamentalist. They're everywhere. They're all over the internet. They want to be, uh, what do they call it? Recovering from fundamentalism. They're everywhere. And I think to myself, well, you were just stupid to begin with. And if there's such a word, you're stupider now. We ain't recovering from nothing good, neighbor. We're reviving from the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, man, rock time! Everybody wants to focus on recovering. Oh, you're recovering. Oh, you need yeah. help. You need therapy. You're recovering. Let's focus on fundamentalist. We're recovering fundamentalism back from people who have hijacked it. We are biblical True. family. We are the fundamentalist. Man. That'll make a Baptist want to speak in tongues right there, boys. One. I'm going to tell you one thing. Uh, we better stay uh, in the old paths. But what are the old paths? I've heard that my whole life, and nobody's ever been able to tell me what the old paths or the old time religion really is because it's whatever era you Mm -hmm. overly romanticize in your mind as being when the church was right. Mm. Like it, lump it, pump it, chump it, take it across the street and dump it. We've raised a generation that is ashamed of our forefathers and act like they were somehow done wrong in the way they were brought up and they were damaged and they were scarred because they were raised in a home that had standards and convictions and kept them on the old time way. You got their number, boys. Y'all thought you started the podcast. You went and started a movement. Thanks for joining us for the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast. Make sure to stay tuned at the end of the show to hear more about the RFP sponsors. Now, here's your host for the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast, Nathan Cravat, J.C. Groves, and Brian Edwards. We'll start out with singing, Shall We Gather at the River? Everybody join in and sing. Shall we gather at the river Where bright angels' feet have trod Gather with the saints at the river And flow from the throne of God Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. All right. When you think about the Jordan River, you think about the ministry of John the Baptist. And when you think about the ministry of John, the most famous baptism of all, 
course, was the baptism of the Lord Jesus. It was a paramount and uh, such an important time in all of Scripture because we hear God the Father speaking from heaven. This is my beloved Son. Of course, God the Son is in the Jordan River with the Spirit of God descending in the form of a dove. And uh, the, the baptism of Christ is recorded in all four Gospels. But uh, I was thinking about the Spirit of God descending on Jesus in the form of a dove. And uh, I was thinking about the significance of that. Uh, the Spirit of God came upon Jesus, number one, to abide on Jesus. John says in chapter one that he saw the Holy Spirit coming down in the form of a dove and it abode on him. And later on, John said, I, I wouldn't have known it was him except he that sent me to baptize said, when you see the Spirit of God coming down and remaining on him. In the Old Testament economy, the Spirit of God would come on a man, perform a, a work, and then the Spirit of God would depart. But the Spirit of God came on Jesus for the first time ever to abide with Him, never to leave Him. And the Bible said that the Spirit of God came in the form of a dove, as a dove. I thought immediately about Noah on the ark, and after the water had been on the earth for over 150 days, you remember Noah sent a raven and a dove out of the boat to see if the waters were abating. And the Bible said that the dove came back, but the raven never returned. You see, the raven was looking for dead bodies. A raven feeds on dead bodies. And it was like a homecoming for the raven. But the dove only looks for life. The dove only connects to life. And so the dove came back. <laughs> Noah waited and he sent the dove out again. And it came back with a branch in its beak. He sent the dove out again, and the third time, the dove never came back because the dove found what it was looking for, which was life. Amen. And so notice the Bible said that John baptized Jesus, which represented his burial. He brought him up out of the water straightway, which represented his resurrection, his victorious uh, resurrection over death, hell, and the grave, yes, and yes. the dove found the life that it had been looking hey, for, man, man. and the dove came down and uh, descended on Jesus to abide with him and remain with him. Not only did the dove came to an, uh, abide with Jesus, but the dove came to anoint Jesus. Yes. You see, there's something that most people overlook, and I, I had overlooked it myself. I don't know how I could have done it. I, I never read anything about it, never heard it preached on or anything, but I had just overlooked it. And that was John's connection to the priesthood. I don't think any of us uh, have connected the, the dots to John and the priesthood. But it's very clear John's father, Zacharias, was a priest. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, John, I believe, was the last of the authentic priests. He was the only one that stood with Jesus. The other priest had been bought and paid for by the Roman government. And so the priesthood fell on John. And I don't think of, uh, that many of us are aware of that. But the priesthood was about to change from the Levitical system yeah. to the Melchizedekian yeah, right. priesthood. And Jesus was the great high priest, yeah. not yeah. after the order of Levi, yeah. but after the order of Melchizedek, yeah. who had no beginning and no end. <laughs> and the only time the words great high priest were ascribed to anyone uh, was to the Lord Jesus, yeah. the high yeah. priest but not the great high priest. Yeah, yeah. Jesus is the great high priest, yeah, yeah. but in order to serve as the priest, he had to be anointed. Yeah, yeah. And so that day, as Jesus was baptized, uh, Jesus was anointed priest, not on the basis that he was a descendant of Levi, but Jesus was anointed high priest uh, because of his death, 
his burial, and his resurrection. And the Spirit of God came upon Jesus. Number three, the Holy Spirit came in the form of love to announce Jesus. And this is the thing. John said, I wouldn't have known him. I would not have known who it was, but the one who sent me to baptize told me, when you see the Holy Spirit descend and remain on him, you'll know that's him. And so the dove came upon Christ to say to John, that's him, that's him. John would not have known who he was apart from the heavenly dove. And I'm glad the heavenly dove uh, convicted me of my sin. And I'm glad the Holy Ghost uh, uh, announced Jesus. He presented Jesus to me. I wouldn't have known him. I would not have known him had it not been for the precious Spirit of God. But I'm glad he revealed. I like the way the Passover uh, was, was referred to in the Old Testament. You remember the Bible says that every man was to take a lamb. And then it said that in the evening the Holy congregation was to kill the lamb and then he said your lamb shall be without spot and without blemish and so it was a lamb progressed to the lamb and then he said your lamb uh, when I was growing up I, I, I heard about Jesus I looked at the pictures in the Bible I had a knowledge of Jesus but to me he was just a lamb but friend the spirit of God convicted me of my sin and showed me my need of Christ and he was not just a lamb anymore he became the lamb but I'm glad when I put my faith and trust in the finished work of Calvary. He was not just the lamb anymore. He was not just the lamb anymore, but he became my lamb. And that was the work of the Spirit of God. And so the Spirit of God descended on Jesus in the form of a dove uh, to announce him. Aren't you glad the Spirit of God revealed Jesus to you that morning, that day, that night? What a what a blessing, what a blessing it is and a blessing to be here today. I think it'd be good if we had prayer and uh, and, and we'll get started. I, I know Brian is going to be baptized and I don't know how many others are going to be baptizing, but I, I know there's some big guys that are going to be baptized. I'm not worried about it. If we can get you under, I promise you will come up. So, so uh, we'll be fine. But uh, let's have a word of prayer together. Father, what a blessing it is to gather here today with our brothers. Uh, Father, what a blessing it is to, to stand in the same river where Jesus stood and, and where John baptized. And Father, I, I pray that you'll bless our little gathering here this afternoon. I pray that, Father, as a result of what is happening right now, what is taking place in our lives, that Jesus would receive maximum glory and honor. And may we leave this site today more in love with Jesus than we were when we came. Oh, God, I pray that he'll become big in each of our hearts. And, Lord, we just thank you and praise you for the work of the heavenly dove in our own lives in Jesus. Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Thanks for listening to the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast. Be sure to stop by our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Give us a follow. Also, go to our website, recoveringfundamentalist.org. That's recoveringfundamentalist.org. There you can find Recovering Fundamentalist swag. You can get your t-shirts and hats. You can join our ex-fundy community. See where we're going to be having some meetups. It's the recoveringfundamentalist.org. Be sure to join us next time for the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast.